This conference will now be recorded. So picking up where we left off last week. So we discussed that in terms of the purpose of creation, everybody just needs to mute. Otherwise, there's a bit there's a there's an echo bounce back until you're ready to speak up. Just please mute. Okay, Uzi and David. Thanks. So the purpose of creation was is that God as this being that is good. So God wants to share good, wants to share good. And he wants to share the epitome of good. And the epitome of good is God himself. Therefore, he wants to create a situation where there is a being that he can share himself with, so to speak, that this being has the ability to connect to God and to access this perfection, this goodness of God. And then he explained that in order to connect to this God, so there needs to be, this person needs to be, or this being, I should say, we haven't gotten to, to person yet, needs to be as godlike as possible and needs to be the Baal, the owner, the deserved recipient of this tov, of this good. Because even though we can't become like God himself, which is inherently good, but if we are, have earned that good so then we are more deserving of it and able to fully appreciate and enjoy that bounty that goodness and th and that is how we are all made right if we feel we've earned something we can enjoy it when it's a freebie we just can't enjoy it nearly as much i remember when i was living in israel and we used to go uh, me and some friends would go to Machane Yehuda, which is the big uh, fruit and vegetable marketplace, Shuk, in Yerushalayim. And we would go late on Thursday night. The reason being, we were all learning in yeshiva then, and we did not have all that much money. And Thursday night is when the prices would drop, 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 because they wanted to get rid of whatever they had, because fresh stuff was coming in Friday morning. They wanted to get rid of all the old stuff. So if you go late, you were able to really uh, get some good bargains. I remember I was standing by one of the stalls there, and he was selling agvaniot. Agvaniot is tomatoes. So agvaniot, agvaniot. And it started off that it was arba shekel a kilo, four shekel for a kilo. Then it was two shekel for a kilo. Then it was one shekel for a kilo. Then it was two kilo for a shekel. Then it was five she five kilo, 10 pounds for a, she for a shekel. He goes, Chamesh kilo le shekel. And I'm taking, taking. And then he says, Bichinam. Take it for free. As soon as he said that, I took my bag, I emptied it out, and I walked away to go to another stall. Why? I I'm all in for a bargain. But thank God I don't need charity. I don't need free fruit coming from the coming from the vendor. There are others who who who, who need that. So when I felt I was getting a good bargain, so I I came late. I'm I've earned it. I'm giving money for it. I'm getting what I what I deserve. Fair enough. As great a bargain as it is, even though there's not that much of a difference between five kilo for a shekel. A shekel is now figure about twenty five cents. So you're getting 10 pounds for 25 cents. There's not that much of a difference between five kilo for a shekel and taking it for free. But we are wired that if I don't deserve it, if I haven't earned it, if I haven't done anything in order to get it, I can't truly enjoy it. And therefore Hashem needed to, or his vision, his wisdom dictated to create a scenario, a world where we as free willed beings, we make choices. And as a result of those choices, we will have earned, we will deserve, we are the Baalim, 
we are the rightful owners of that connection and that incredible ecstasy of that connection that we will have with Hashem. Vizeh, and this is, we continue now, right where the, my little arrow is. Ki biyot mitziyu amiti. Being that God himself is the only true, absolute perfection, as we have said, Kamosha Amarnu, Hine, Mishuhu Shleimut, Eina Mityaches Elalo. Mashu Shleimut, anything that we'd say is perfect, can only be Mityaches, connected, associated with Him. Ka'anaf El Ashoresh, like a branch which grows out from a root. Even though we don't reach that ultimate root, foundational perfection, but nevertheless, it is an extension. It is born, so to speak, from that. Now we understand. Ki ashleimut amiti, true perfection, he nehu mitziuto. That is God's existence, God's inherent essence. Yitbarach shemo, blessed is he. V'chol chisaron, and any deficiency, anything that is lacking, eno ela helem tu void barach shemo. That is simply God's a concealment, a hiddenness, of God. Of his Any, goodness. Sorry, Uzi? Concealment of his goodness. Concealment of his goodness. His deficiency is concealment of his goodness. Yes. So anything that is a chisaron, that there's deficiency, that it's non-perfection, that's lacking, that is a concealment of his goodness. Now, you, you probably notice, if you're looking at the Hebrew, that the Hebrew word for concealment Ha'alem is very similar to the word olam, which is the Hebrew word for world. And that is the concept that we've mentioned before, that the Hebrew, Lashon HaKodesh, the holy language which reveals so much depth, the word for world is concealed. The definition of the world is the place where Hashem is concealed. That is the very definition of the word olam, world in Hebrew. Vehester panav. So it's the concealment of Hashem's goodness, vehester, and a hiding of panav, of his face. And this is a term that we have from the Torah, this hester panim, this hiding of Hashem's face. Now, you know, as the Torah says, when when evil, when bad things will befall us as a nation, it's because of Hashem's hester panim. Now, it, that is such a powerful expression. Because hester panim means I'm hiding my face, meaning I'm watching. I see everything that's going on, but I've hidden my face so you can't see that I'm watching. Oh. So actually, when we feel that we have been, um, God has abandoned us, it's not abandonment. It's hester panim. It's a hiding of his face. So we don't see his panim, so to speak. We don't feel that presence. We don't sense that presence. But it is still there. Yeah, Rabbi, I... Yes, you see. I was young. I understood Hester Panim with a bit of a, a little bit of a difference. Uh, meaning, as you said, meaning he is watching everything, but he's not <clears> getting <throat> involved uh, with the um, um, with the serene, with, with 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 what's going with the bad things the that's travail, happening. The so he's, not helping, he's not helping you out. So he's he's um, hiding his face from you for, by not helping you. Uh, for whatever problems you're, you're having. That, that is correct. I'm not saying differently, Uzi. What I'm saying is the, the, the picture, the portrait that's drawn for us is letting us know Hashem is right there, 
but he's hiding his face. We don't see, meaning we don't see his involvement. We don't see plagues coming at the Egyptians. We don't see that. But it's not that he has gone away. He has not abandoned, but he is hiding his face. And, and there's more than that, because it's connected to the deficiency of his uh, concealment of his goodness, including his terpanin, meaning that the terpanin itself is, a, 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 again, a concealment of his goodness, meaning Correct. the, uh, the terpanin itself is for our own good. Yes, yes. And that is what leads to all of the chisaron, all of the deficiencies and all the issues in the world. Benimsa shaharat panavi parachshamo. So therefore, the illumination of Hashem's face, harat panim, the opposite of the of the hester panim, the the illumination, the glow that we sense, the kirvato, and His drawing close. Tia shorish vasiba, that'll be the root and the cause l'chol hashleimut shetiye for all of the good that will be, the hester panim panav. For all the perfection and concealment of his presence is the shorish and the siba, that's the root and the cause of all that is lacking, the kochi saron. Asher kashir haester, kach yeshir hachisaron in shachmine. And it's a very, very clear parallel. The degree of that concealment will be the degree of that which is lacking in the world. Bialkain. And therefore, are we still good over here? I'm looking in my own safer. Al came, and therefore, Hanivra Hazeh, this creation, Haomeid Vishikul, who stands balanced, Bein Ashleimut Vachesronot, between aspects of perfection and aspects of lacking deficiency. Shehem, which are toldot, which are the results of the ha'ara, the illumination, or the hester, the concealment. So we stand in balance, and we have a very profound effect. Behid chazko miyut, when we grab hold of perfection in the actions that we do, in the words that we use, in the thoughts that we have, and we, when we internalize that, when we acquire that and make that a part of ourselves, so we are, so to speak, grabbing hold, connecting ourselves to God, who is the root and the source of this. And the more that we grab hold, of these of this perfection that that's a greater degree that we are grabbing hold by hit kut and the connection the clinging bow to him to the point that when we reach this epitome the 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 height of this acquiring the shlemiyot then we reach the highest level of achiza, of this grabbing hold. And our connection, our clinging to him. We have this connection to God. We have the absolute, incredible, ecstatic pleasure of God's goodness. Umishtalembo, we ourselves become perfected through this. Baal But we and we are the owner, the earned owner, the deserved recipient of Tuvo Ushlemuto because we chose to do it. We our decisions make who we are. That's that is what we become. Vihine. Sorry, I have a question. Is it, is it really possible to achieve or to attain this perfection? I mean, he's asking to be as close as possible to a godly perfection. And once it's, we are, are we going to? It's possible to attain the greatest degree 
to which a human being can attain. Right. Right. We're never going to become God, but it's possible to attain the greatest degree that a Bria, a creation, can attain. Now, in Mesilat Yesharim, and he'll, he'll, he'll touch upon this here also later on, he'll, he'll explain the place of this actual Devekut is not when we are here in this physical body in the physical world. The place of this absolute true Dveikus will be once we go to the next, the next stage, the next, which is, I don't like to say the spiritual realm just because it also involves some physicality, the Tchiyat HaMetan we speak about in, in our Midah, but that is a physicality that is so spiritualized that it really is a spiritual, spiritual realm. But we'll come to all that. Okay. Oh, you need to scroll down, Rebbe. I think we're there, Uzi. All right. Where, where, ah, I see. I see. Sorry. Thank you. Vihine. Okay. 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 In order that this creation, this universe, this world that God created, will have these different aspects, shall shleimut of perfection and of uh, and of deficiency lacking, shezachan that we mentioned, v'timatzei habria shezacharnu. And that this creation, this creature that we mentioned, will be batchuna. She heats richaliot, will be in the situation that he needs to be. Perush meaning, beefsharut lishnei ha'inyanim. So mankind needs to have equal access, equal opportunity. Lishnei ha'inyanim to these two aspects, uvi yicholet alehem, and have the ability, the potential, the efsharut, and the yichod, and the ability for both. Shetik nahashleimut to acquire this perfection, the teyader, and to avoid to stay away min hachesronot. To stay away from the deficiency. And we need to have the means, the abilities for both of these. Perush, we need to have the choice. Liknot ze ha shleimut to acquire this shleimut. Hine vadai. So therefore, it's very clear. Shepratim rabim bishonim, details, multitudes of details, and shonim and different situations, sarich need sheyimatzu vabria, need to be found available here in this creation. The yichusim rabim, and different relationships, bein apratim. Ha'ela, between these different aspects, so that this purpose will be actually realized. So we need to have, in other words, we need to have this incredibly complex world where every single thing in the world serves this purpose of creating this environment where we have the choice to connect ourselves towards this perfection or lean ourselves towards the lacking and the deficiencies. And this comes into the topic that we'll spend a lot of time, that he'll spend a lot of time on, which is the Hashkacha Pratit, which is the divine providence. And the 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 individualized providence that each and every one of us 
are constantly being presented situations which give us the choice. How am I going to act, react to all these different things that happen? What choices am I going to make? Because that is the whole purpose. And, and, and we always have a choice. We always have a choice. Uh, Viktor Frankl, in his classic Man's Search for Meaning, and he wrote this as a psychologist in Auschwitz, in the, in the most horrific of, of places that human beings have been forced to endure. And he writes there that there is one freedom that can never be taken away from a person. And that very last freedom when it seems that every possible freedom has been taken away, and in a concentration camp, just about every possible freedom had been taken away. They were being starved as they're being worked to death, and they see death and hatred and anger all around them constantly. But no matter what, he says, the one, the one freedom that is never taken away is the freedom to choose how will I react to any given situation. And life is this constant stream of these situations that come our way. And as, as I like to put it, the, the, the cards are being dealt to us and we have to keep playing our hand, keep playing our hand. We don't control the cards. The cards is what he's talking about over here, that we have these situations around us where each one of them is giving us these opportunities. But we have to play the hand, and that determines who and what we are and what we are all about. V'ulam. Habriya. And this creature, Asheri hit at hit at tita, that was destined, atid, that was destined, in gadol hazeh, for this great, great purpose, Hainu, which is ladveikut boid barakshimo, which is to connect and cling to God, as we mentioned, he tikareha ikarit. That is the very main primary point of the creation. Uzi, I'm gonna have to mute you until you talk because otherwise we, we get a lot of bounce back. He tikareha ikarit. That is the ikar. That is the crown. That is the mainstay. That is primary. Shebechol habriya of the entire creation. Bechol sha'arma and everything else. Sheyimatseva mitziyut that exists. Lo yye ela ozer will simply be there as a help, as an aid, as a prop. Be'eze tzad u be'eze bechina in some way, in some aspect, it's there simply in order to create this environment and this opportunity for this free-willed being to make their choices. And ideally, the choices are to connect to God, to connect to this perfection, and to become that much more godly. Say that when he is successful, say, and it will, I'm sorry that they are say that they will exist then. The Alkain Everything else is considered to be tafel. Tafel is secondary. to this main primary creature that we have mentioned. And that's why, from a Torah perspective, 
And this came up in our Lunch and Learn when we discussed vegetarianism. The Torah commands us, and actually one of the seven Noahide mitzvot is kindness, not cruelty to animals. Tsar ba'alei chayim, the concept of causing anguish to animals, that is a Torah precept that we cannot cause undue pain to animals. For that does not mean that we can't utilize the animal kingdom. They are here for us to utilize in a kind, generous manner. So tsar balei chayim, and we have many, many halachot, many laws that are involved with that in terms of, of well, the shechita, the way that we slaughter an animal, needs to be done with a knife that doesn't even have a single nick. And the, the shochet will run his finger over the blade to make sure there's not a single nick. Because if there's a single nick in the knife, then when they slice with it, it cuts, it tears, as opposed to slicing. And that is something that could cause pain. And we can't, you can't eat before you fed your animal. And you can't have two different animals pulling a plow. And the animals must rest on Shabbat. On and on and on. But it's not because animals are like humans or humans are like animals. It's because we are commanded to have this respect and honor and care for all that which God created. But it's there for us to utilize in our service of God. Now, if a person feels repulsed by eating animals, then one does not need to do that. But when we have these, these campaigns you know, to save this and save that, when there are human beings that are starving to death, that is a little, that is misdirected and misguided. From the Torah point of view, as the Ramchal here is saying, everything else in the world serves as a prop for us, serves as creating the environment that allows us to make these decisions that have this eternal effect on us and on the universe. Ach, Habria, sorry, let me pull you down now. Ach, Habria ha'ikarit, be'emet, this primary, essential creature that we have been discussing, he, is, as you might have guessed at this point, Hamin Ha'anoshi. This is humankind. That is this Bria Ikarit. Now, this is not Jews as opposed to non-Jews. This is humankind. The whole Sha'ar Hanivraim and all of the other creations Bain Hashifalim, Bain Hagvohim, Mimenu. Whether they are beneath man or they are above man. Now, when we say above man, we're not referring to birds flying above our heads. We are referring to there are these spiritual beings that were that are in the creation, that are in the world. We call them malachim, right? A malach actually is a shaliach. The term malach, which we define as angels, also is a shaliach, is a messenger, something that has a mission to do. So they also serve their purpose, but they're all there for the sandwich, for us in the middle those that are beneath us, those that are above us. In this week's Parsha, Parsha Vayetze, Yaakov has his epic dream, and we'll discuss that tomorrow morning at our nine o'clock class. Yaakov has 
his epic dream. And what does he see? The ladder stretching up to the heavens. And Malachi Elohim, angels of God, Olim Biordim Bo, that are ascending and descending. And there are many, many different as- explanations, which each are a different aspect. But Ramban there explains these angels have their missions, so to speak. And they're coming down, complete their missions. They're, so to speak, going up. So everything else that is created, whether it's those that are beneath us, that will include animals, plants, inanimate objects, and that which are higher than us, above us, they are only there for us. Lahashlamat in Yanav, in order to create this shleimut, this perfection, in order to create this environment. According to all of these different aspects and qualities, many different that are ruyot, that are properly deserving to be here, kamosha eva er. As I will explain oh further, Lifanim, as we go further, Bisiata Dishmaya. They are all Ba'avuro, they're all here for us. Vihine, and behold, Hahaskala Bahalami Dotovot. Intellect, understanding, all of the Midot Tovot, all of the positive character traits. These are all the perfection aspects. Shanim Su'u that are there, Lishtalain Bahem Adam, that a person can achieve this perfection through them. The Inyaneha Chomer and aspects of the physicality, Umidot Haraot, and the negative character traits. Heim Inyanei HaChisaron. These are all aspects of the Chisaron, of that which is lacking. Shezachana that we mentioned. Shadam Musam Beinehem. And that's us. That's us in the middle. Mankind, humankind, is placed right in the middle of this stew, of this broth with all of this swirling all around us, leaving it for us to make the choices, liknot lo hashlemut, to make the choices to acquire this shlemut, to acquire this perfection. And like we said, everything is enam ela ba'avuro, it's only for us. And it, it, it reminds us of of that of that mission in Birkei Avot, Erchayav Adam Lomar, a person is obligated to say, Bishvili Nivra Olam, for me the world was created. And at first glance, it might seem to be a very haughty, egotistical. Huh, the world was created for me. So get out of my way, right? Make room. Here comes me. For me, the world is created. But that's not what the words say. The words say, Chayav Adam Lomar. A person is obligated to say, the world is created for me. Which means that I have my obligations. I'm here for a reason. And if God put me here, it's that something that I can bring, that I can add. And he put me here in the middle of this stew, in the middle of all of these different opportunities, all these cards that are being dealt to me, every moment, every conversation, every phone call, every encounter, every moment we have these choices that are presented to us. And the decisions, the decisions that we make determine who we are, what we're about, and what we are connecting ourselves to. And that connection is this eternal connection that we are discussing over here. So the next chapter, once we've uh, given it away in this last paragraph, 
that this creature that we're discussing is humankind. So next chapter, Perik Shlish, that will start next week, sorry, that will start next week is Bamin HaEnoshi, right? Mankind, humankind, understanding man's free will, understanding the body and soul, understanding the different time periods that are given to us, the time of working, of striving, and the time of earning, and the different stages that mankind has gone through. Before the sin, after the sin, this is a uh, a very, very fundamental and uh, provocative chapter that we will begin next week, Bezrat Hashem. Okay, my friends, good seeing everybody. Just a couple of things. Tomorrow, those who want to join us for our Parsha class, that's at 9 a.m. on this same channel. And Wednesday night at the JCC, Joel Peremba is going to be um, speaking about his book. I will be introducing him. Amazing book about his father, an amazing, amazing person. Uh, very, very worthwhile. That's 6 p.m. Wednesday night at the JCC. And yeah, good. And then we'll continue Lunch and Learn on Thursday. And we have our uh, conversion class. We're starting this week, Tuesday night. So a lot going on. And great to have all of you along with us. Shako. Baruch Bye. You should give a call to Colin. Very important you speak to Colin within the next couple of days. You did? Okay. You did yeah, very important. Okay, I hope you can straighten him out because I cannot. <laughs> Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night, Michael. Good, night. Good, night. Good to see you. you. Good night. Good night. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, it's sort of not, I'm trying to understand it, but I don't really know how to understand it. When it says here in the, in the piece that it says, um, yeah. Well, it's, it's sort of a mitzvah gorot mitzvah and uh, avira gorot avira because but it's um, just very unclear what what I, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't. I, I'm not sure that's what he's saying now, over here about the mitzvah gerd mitzvah. I think what because he's what, much, I, what, okay. what, what I'm understanding he's saying is connection to God is the shleimut, and and the the distance is the the distancing is the chisaron, and it's not black and white it's not an on off it's not binary it's not an on off switch but there are gradations that's what will determine where a person is along this tremendous continuum that's how i'm saying as as much as he is more uh in there uh, that you if you if you're greatly getting closer to shlemot then he's feeling uh, it's as if you're getting closer to to him, then the world is filled more with him, then your free choice is becoming less because he's filling mm-hmm. up the space that <laughs> that um, that he gave you before. And Interesting now- idea. Interesting idea. Uh, I, in fact, we say that the greater a person is, Gamken Yitzro Mitgaber, the Yitzro also. So no matter no matter where the world is at, a person is always going to be having their their choices. It might end up being a finer choice, a loftier choice, but there's always going to be these decisions between the shleimut and the chisaron. On a lower level, it could be a very very base coarse decision that make, the person is making. As there is greater ha'ara in the world, and it gets great, and and the world becomes purer then there's still going to be all of these decisions, but it's going to be a much more uh, uh, illuminated, illuminated. I, I need to stop now because they're going to start diving. I need to run over to davening.
But okay, I apologize. Okay, okay thanks. Sure.